I was born in 1937, two years, well, just as Hitler came to power, actually. Um, of course, so by 39, 1939, uh, war had been declared. My mum used to say to me, you can go out to play with your cousin Alan, but don't go on the bomb sites. Of course, the first place we go is the bomb sites, right? <laughs> we used to go on the bomb sites. And within a few weeks, you would notice plants growing and taking over the bomb sites. And I thought to myself, whatever damage mankind does, nature's always going to win. Where our shelter was, right at the back of our garden, in the middle of four gardens where the, the fences met, was this huge oak tree. And uh, I always felt protected by that oak tree. Although there were hardly any birds around, there was an old owl and he used to come and nest, uh, nest in that oak tree every night. He never left London. And, and I felt that oak tree and the, the, uh, the owl were sort of looking after us, really, you know, the, the guardians looking over us. And I thought that was amazing. I always thought to myself, why shouldn't men be able to um, dress colourful as well as women? But then I, when I got married, um, I tried to conform a little. Uh, I suppose, but then my, my first wife died um, when she was only 31 in 1967, just as the, the hippie era was starting. And of course I was devastated, I had two little girls I brought up on my own. Um, and I thought to myself, why should I be what other people want me to be? And I became a hippie and just let my hair grow and be whiskers, as they are now. Because I was a one-parent family and, you know, I, I worked with younger people, they used to come round and help me with the, the children and so on, uh, I become a bit of a guru, so they used to ask my advice, because I was an old hippie, I was 31 by this time, you know. And of course so, it, it worked out that we had hippies, mods, rockers, you straights as they called them. I was a hippie with a difference, I, I got the kids off the drugs, I used to say to them, look, um, you know, you can get turned on by music, by art, by poetry, by a lovely garden scene, the, the, the nature itself, uh, why do you need these other substances? And as I said, I couldn't risk taking drugs when I had two little girls to look after anyway. I made up this story about Uncle Pete living in this house and at the bottom of the garden was this big magic oak tree. And then one day the, the, the youngsters said to me, do you know Pete, um, we're more like a family and let's call ourselves the Magic Oak Tree family. But the thing is, I get people now, because I run a website, and it's all under the name of the MOTF, Magic Oak Tree family, I get people from all over the world, Pete, can we join the Magic Oak Tree family? Do we join? And I used to say to them, and I still do, if you believe you're a part of the MOTF, then you are. Simple as that. But when I was left on my own with the girls, with the two children, Vivian and Debbie, and, um, I used to, because obviously they uh, they were disrupted, their mother dying, left with me and everything, and we were very, very short of money. Um, and so I used to, to comfort them, I used to tell them stories. And I said, back, back in the land of Widgery Poe, there lived a what was he? And then the girls say, what was he? So I say, yeah, well, that's what he was, a what was he? <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, there's one part is, um, uh, little L says to TikTok, oh no, that's irrelevant. And suddenly this pink irrelevant flies down from the sky and lands in front of them, you see. So, and little L herself, you know, um, uh, TikTok's walking along and he starts stopping, then he stops starting, and then he stops altogether. And, um, and he, he, he then gets wound up by an uncontrollable habit. But the funny thing is, a lot of adults uh, read them and say, it does my head in, I can't understand it. <laughs> and yet eight-year-olds can understand it. It's because I based it on the way children think, not adults. <laughs> it comes to me and Nikki meeting up. Um, that was all down to my daughter, Deborah. And, uh, and she was asking Deborah for advice as a good friend of hers. And um, Deb said, uh, oh, you, you should meet my dad. You know, he's a bit of a hippie guru and people go to him for advice and that. She said, you, you meet my dad. She said, you'll love him. And of course, she didn't realise what she was saying because when Nicky and I met, we really did fall in love. So, that's how we met. I thought he was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I never...
I first met him. Um, not met anyone quite like him actually. <laughs> and he gave me a huge cuddle, um, which was lovely and warm, and um, very warm in person. And um, yeah, he made me feel at home straight away. Well, I mean, once I realised that my feelings were Nikki, I, I just kept proposing <laughs> to her. And then <laughs> we we decided to, and yeah, the, the 10th of April. Yeah. So Last good, year, Good Friday, good deed. <laughs> As my grandma put it, <laughs> we we decided to actually tie the knot, yes. and we had a hippie wedding. Yes, with completely everybody dressed up. Sorry, <laughs> completely different and off the wall to everything else. I've been to quite a few weddings where very traditional and very elegant and lovely, but I just really wanted to do something with a huge difference and dress up, have fun, totally informal. A lot of people didn't get it, but... <laughs> After I'd been with Nikki for two years, I had 36 stories ready because she'd inspired me. Wow. She had, for example, <laughs> one day she uh, she got lost her temper about something and she said, Oh, Fudgerima. <laughs> she said a swear and she said Fudgerima. And I said, what a brilliant idea. She said, what? I said, Fudgerima, a fairy that can't spell. And, uh, she said, do you want a cup of tea? And I said, oh, yes, I'll have a cup of tea or something like that. I can't remember exactly. And she said, oh, certainly your royal hedgehog. And I thought, royal hedgehog? And suddenly, one of Fudgerima's <laughs> friends, he's the royal hedgehog, you see. <laughs> he's not a planner. And, and that's taught me not to plan, you know. Soon after we'd, we'd got together, actually, started living together, um, Nikki was actually nursing at the time, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. But, um, and she, she'd got a weekend off and she said, how about going somewhere? So I said, oh, I said, where? She said, I don't know, she said, let's hop in the car. <laughs> and we finished up <laughs> yeah. at Stonehenge That's at cool. Avery, and we just mm. booked in where we, we happened to be. And it was it was one of the yeah. most fantastic weekends I've ever had because it wasn't planned. We just did it. It's actually my idea that him go back into doing acting and uh, I yeah, I did do it, incidentally. I did stage work and, and we used to make our own films, me and two friends. I put him, gave him an idea and he went on Star Now, one of our ages, I might say. <laughs> um, and it went from there and then Ray Knight contacted him and seen his website and and I just kind of went with the flow. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, I, I think I also helped with his um, website. When I first met him, he was updating it monthly. There's a lot of, like a long list of yeah. things you've written down he wanted to update and, and I'm never thinking, why wait a month just to do that? Yeah. Why don't we live in the 21st century? You can update whenever you want. Of course, we discovered YouTube, but then yeah. we extended the Wizardry Pooh site onto YouTube, and we have the continuing, even the continuing wedding adventure we had, didn't yeah. we? That's on there. <laughs> well, I see the site and the YouTube videos and everything uh, for um, not so much of making money, but hopefully more and more people will look at it and say, look, this is the way life should be. You know, life should be an adventure. I'll go when I'm ready. You know, <laughs> what I mean? you know what I mean? Because if you keep thinking of things and you, you're having these adventures and enjoying life, it would just continue to do yeah. that, won't we? Yeah. Spread the love and light and yeah. knowledge, hopefully. Yeah, and, and uh, try and bring happiness to this world. There's yeah. not enough of it. Laughter, fun, you know, positive energy. <laughs> And love. and love, I believe in love. Really yeah, that's what it's all about. The future is love and hope for the world. Yeah. There's no stopping it now. Yeah. <laughs>